The NBA Today is a league where the phrase, what have you done for me lately, applies to the attitude of those around the league more than it ever has. The unfortunate part about this is that young NBA players that come in as teenagers may still need a few years of development before they're ready to compete at this level, and if they're not great from day one, there are people that are ready to give up on them. However, you can only have so much patience with a player before you have to accept that his ceiling may not be as high as originally believed. In the first few years of a player's career, especially those that were drafted very early on with huge expectations, you at the very least want to see them flash potential even if it doesn't come consistently. But if they can't even do that, then it may be time to abandon the hopes of them ever becoming a great player, and you have to readjust your expectations of them moving forward, which brings us to the topic of today's video. Today we'll be discussing four young players in particular that got drafted with the hopes of becoming a star, but now it's time to give up on those dreams. This doesn't mean they can't still be productive players at this level, but their ceiling is just a lot lower than initially expected. Before we start though, I want to thank Manta Sleep for sponsoring today's video. Manta Sleep is here to provide you with the world's best sleep masks and functional sleep accessories, but they are also so much more than that. They're leading the way in the ProNap movement, and everything they do is fueled by their drive to enable better lives through better sleep and regular naps. The truth is that your body was wired to nap, and for good reason. Naps give you energy, focus, strength, and clarity that you don't get when you grind through the afternoon. They give what you call a second morning. Manta Sleep has products for all kinds of sleep too, such as the sleep mask for a deeper sleep, the cool mask for a more soothing sleep, the steam mask that uses steam to alleviate stress and dry your eyes during sleep, a mask with Bluetooth headphones built in so you can play some relaxing sounds to fall asleep to, and so many more helpful sleep masks for you to check out. If you're ready to join the ProNap movement, then go down to the link in the description of this video, and when you use code HOOPS at checkout, you get 10% off of your order. Once again, thank you to Mantisleep for sponsoring today's video, now let's get back to the topic at hand. The first young player it's officially time to give up on taking that leap towards stardom is Cam Reddish of the Portland Trailblazers. Ever since his time at Duke, Reddish has been a player whose entire status was based on his ridiculously high ceiling, and not necessarily based on what he was actually doing on the basketball court. At 6'8", he's got the body and the tools teams love from a wing player, and aesthetically, he looks like he's got a vast array of moves at his disposal with a smooth handle to become a shot creator but the issue is that the production does not match it up. Reddish is as inconsistent of a player as there has been over the last few seasons, and according to reports, he doesn't do himself any favors with his work ethic. Every year in his four-year career so far, he's been about a 10-point-per-game scorer, but he has never shot the ball above league average from three, and his defensive effort has left a lot to be desired. He is now playing for his third team in four years, after falling out of the rotations of both the Atlanta Hawks and the New York Knicks, despite both teams being being in need of help on the wing, so that tells me that he's not doing himself any favors in the locker room. For me, Reddish has always seemed like the kind of player that views himself as a star in the making, and as a result of it, he wants more of the offense run through him to allow him to take the kind of shots that a go-to option takes. The reality that Reddish is going to have to accept and embrace is that if he wants to salvage his NBA career and make it a long one, it's not going to be as the star of a team, but he could become a pretty damn good 3 and D role player if he buys into the role. He has the tools to play good defense, but he doesn't give enough effort to be a good defender right now, and he's shown he can heat up from 3, but he always wants to be more involved when teams have him spotting up on the wing, so ultimately his future will come down to whether or not he buys into the reality of his situation. The next young player that it may be time to give up on reaching their full potential is Killian Hayes of the Detroit Pistons. Hayes entered the league as a player who was being compared to guys like Prime Goran Dragic who was an all-star, as a modest comparison for his game, and I even saw some outlets comparing him to James Harden when discussing his ceiling. Well, we're now well into his third season as a pro, and those comparisons now look like a distant memory because he's at the point where he'll be lucky to retain a role as a team's backup point guard moving forward. As I said in the intro of the video, you at least want to see some sort of potential 
or even the slightest bit of improvement from year to year from these young guys, but it's not even exaggeration when I say that Hayes was arguably the worst scorer in the entire NBA when he was a rookie, and now in his third year, he's barely improved. He still has yet to shoot anywhere close to 40% from the field in a season, his three-point shooting ranks near the bottom of the NBA, and the Pistons are actually 4.7 points worse this year with him on the court compared to when he's on the bench, so it's tough to even argue that he's impacting the game in other areas. I will say that the one part of his game that is genuinely solid is his passing ability and overall ability to create for those around him, as he is dishing out about 6 assists per game in 27 minutes of action per night, and also ranks in the top 25 of the league in assist to turnover ratio. He's not going to be the dynamic 3-level scorer that can generate offense both by scoring and passing, like a James Harden or even a Goran Dragic, but I still believe he can be a good backup point guard because of his feel for the game and ability to pick out teammates, and that may not be as exciting, but it is the truth. The next young player that it's time to abandon those dreams of stardom for is James Wiseman of the Detroit Pistons. Wiseman was drafted second overall in 2020, and even during his pre-draft process, he was a huge mystery. We barely got to see him play at all at the college level because he dropped out early to focus on preparing for the draft, but had such incredible physical tools that tantalized NBA scouts. There were a lot of players he was being compared to back then, with Anthony Davis being the player that scouts thought could be his best case scenario, and even the realistic comparisons were made to prime DeAndre Jordan Jordan, who was a regular on the all-defensive teams year in and year out, so regardless, he came in with lofty expectations. Three years later though, Wiseman is at a point where he still needs to prove he can impact the game in a positive way consistently, and the dreams of him being a star or even a dominant defender are a very long ways away. Wiseman has dealt with quite a few injuries in his time, so it's not completely his fault, but when he's been on the court, he's looked pretty lost often, and especially defensively, he just doesn't have the natural instincts to put those God-given gifts of his to use. He ranks in the bottom five of the NBA regarding field goal percentage he allows by opponents at the rim, and Warriors lineups with Wiseman in them were getting absolutely slaughtered defensively compared to lineups where he was out of the game. Now that he's in Detroit, he'll have the opportunity to develop at a more reasonable pace without the pressure of championship contention like there was when he was in Golden State, but even with his great physical attributes, he's got a long way to go as an actual basketball player. And finally, the last player it may be time to give up on reaching their full potential is Romeo Langford of the San Antonio Spurs. Langford was a lottery pick in the 2019 draft because he was a guard viewed as someone with as much scoring talent as anybody. He was one of the top recruits coming out of high school, so he's been in the public eye for a while, but unfortunately he hasn't been able to live up to all of the hype that has surrounded him since he was a teenager. Langford is another example of a player who has dealt with his fair share of injuries early in his career but again, the injuries are not why he's included on this list, because he's now four years into his career and what he's shown on the court has not demonstrated any reason to believe he can be the player he was once expected to be. He's a player who was drafted where he was because of his scoring ability, but that just hasn't translated to the next level. He started his career on the Celtics, where he was admittedly a bit of an afterthought because of the team's expectations to compete at the highest level, but they traded him to San Antonio at last year's trade deadline, and this year in San Antonio, he has had more freedom, but it hasn't resulted in that breakout season we were hoping for. He's scoring just 7 points per game this year, he's shooting an abysmal 28 percent from three, and he doesn't necessarily impact many other areas of the game to justify the hype. And with that being said, that's all I have for you today. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what you think about these disappointing young players. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.